Okay, so one of the best things about YouTube uh, or posting videos to YouTube is that uh, it gives me access to the hive mind. Uh, no matter what my question is, uh, there's somebody out there who knows the answer to it. So uh, I bet there's even somebody who knows what the meaning of life is. <laughs> but uh, I had recently posted a video about uh, this guy here and how to get this off. And uh, YouTube unanimously told me that this uh, shaft here that comes out of the motor is not threaded and this should just come off. And the problem is that it's rusted on there and uh, I think probably over 100 people told me that I need to put penetrating oil on there. So that's what I did. Uh, I got some penetrating oil and uh, several people said PB Blaster is preferable to WD-40 and that I should spray it in from the back, the front, and the little uh, hole where the pin went to hold the fan on that uh, shaft that rotates. Okay, so I did a little test squirt and uh, I, <laughs> clearly it just ran down. So now I've got it more on a vertical axis. So uh, when I spray, it should just kind of, gravity should just pull it on down all around that uh, shaft. So let's, let's give it a shot. Fills up. And... Apparently this is gonna be a slower process than I thought. <laughs> But it seems to be draining okay. Okay, so 10 minutes later, and I'm gonna hit it from the other side. Turn it over here. Okay, so we can see that we got good penetration there because that's all wet as it ran down through from the other side. Now I flipped it over. And uh, just for good measure, I'm gonna add some here. And here's the little uh, hole where that retaining pin, somebody told me what that was called, I already forgot, uh, was. And we'll hit that, let it drain and then hit it again. And then we'll set it, or uh, leave it to sit and do its magic. This uh, backdrop is starting to grow on me. I think it's a good uh, backdrop for conversations in front of the camera. So uh, today I wanted to talk about three items that are kind of old and uh, ask a few questions of you guys. So uh, obviously these are way before my time uh, and I need some help with some of them. So. But before I get into the first one, uh, I wanted to tell you a little bit of a story. I, I used to live in Arizona, and uh, as a side hobby kind of a thing, I would find go hunt for stuff at Goodwills and estate sales and uh, put it on eBay. And it was just a fun thing to do. And uh, I had this one experience where I went to an estate sale, and I went, you know, wherever the, they just open the houses and you're able to walk through and uh, buy stuff that they're trying to liquidate. So if there's a room that's open, you're pretty much welcome to walk through it and see if there's something to buy there. So I walked into a closet in a bedroom and there were several women in there going through the clothing. And uh, I just walked in to see what was in there. And I spied something from the corner of my eye and it was, it looked like a dirty old trash bag. <laughs> <laughs> hanging there in the corner of the closet. So uh, I kept looking and the women were kind of looking at me like, what are you doing in here? And uh, so it caught my attention. Something was just like calling me. So I, I walked over to look at it and I pulled it out and my suspicion was confirmed that it does, it really did look like a dirty old trash bag. You couldn't, uh, uh, you know, make a case that it was something else. So. 
I pulled it out and I looked at it and I'm like thinking to myself, man, this thing is ugly. Gosh darn, is this thing ugly. But maybe ugly means money. So I decided to keep it, you know, and uh, I walked up to the front and I said, hey, will you, will you give me this thing for five bucks, this old thing? And they said, yeah, take it, you can have it. And uh, so I, I took it home and as it turned out, uh, it was a dress by a Japanese designer. Uh, I think the name was Yamamoto. Uh, and it was a very expensive dress and it was like a real payday, it was so awesome. And uh, I kind of made that mental note that like, sometimes ugly means value. <laughs> So uh, that brings me to this because the other day we were in Decatur, Illinois and Decatur has a, a real industrial history. It's like more industrial than most of, most of the area around is agricultural agrarian, but Decatur is kind of an exception. It has lots of large uh, factories and plants there and uh, ADM is there. And there was a movie with Matt Damon where he played a whistleblower and that was that movie was set in Decatur, Illinois, and it's just a, like a 30 minute drive for me. But they have this industrial history, so there's lots of it, cool industrial stuff in all the antique stores. And uh, they have this one that's only open every other Saturday. And we went there, I went with my dad, and I think you'll see that in another video. I'm not sure if it's posted at the point this is being posted, but it will be on the channel. I was downstairs and this thing kept looking at me. It looked like a hunk of metal. And it reminded me of like steampunk. It looked seriously Frankenstein. And it was ugly. And I, I just kept having that memory of that dress. And I thought, you know what? I got that same thing going on in here. This little red flag light bulb's going on. Maybe I should get that. And so I asked the guy, I said, hey, this thing looks pretty quirky and cool. Could I uh, give you five bucks for this? And he said, yeah, take it. So I bought it. And uh, it is very early piece of automotive stuff. And I'd like to show it to you guys. And if you can tell me what you think about it. Let me show you about it and then I'll ask you my question for it. Okay, now is that Frankenstein or is that Frankenstein? <laughs> uh, yeah, this is like a super early, from what I can tell, a super early car battery charger. And uh, it has this slate, which is the same that's in the circuit breaker boxes from this building from 1919. And it's got some gauges on it. And that one says amperes on it here. It's got like a bronze rim here and a light socket. And I saw something similar online. What is that? Is that like something somebody made for a joke or something? Because the ones I saw online, they actually had light bulbs in it. I think they were like to signify the current was going through it or something. And what is that? So anyway, very, very old. I, uh, I only found two that were kind of similar. Both were restored really well. And one was for sale on first dibs for almost $3,000 and it had already sold. Everybody knows that uh, the prices on first dibs are super exaggerated and they're not realistic. So I don't know what the actual value of a completely restored one of these is, but I do know that it's super rare because I couldn't find a lot of them online. Uh, the other one was at the Chicago Museum of Science and Industry and uh, yeah, it's got like a fuse here, current meters, I guess, something like that. And it's got a coil under there and this extremely old plug. I don't know if that's legible or not. But yeah, I've seen better days. So uh, my question is, can you tell me anything about it? Uh, is it desirable for collectors? Is it, you know, is it something that collectors would be interested in? And sh 
how important would it be to restore this or is it better just kind of as a Frankenstein piece of super old collectible automobilia? Uh, I also thought about maybe reaching out to another YouTuber that has like a restoration channel. That would be pretty cool to see this thing fully restored. I don't know how collaborations like that work, but uh, it's actually sitting up here because, oh, yeah, okay, I pushed it in. <laughs> there was a screw, I almost dropped my phone there. Uh, yeah, so I was thinking about maybe sending it to another YouTuber who does restorations or something. I don't know how those collaborations work, but um, here's another view of the top. And this is what I really don't understand. What is going on with that? Maybe that just gives off heat? I don't know. So, okay. Okay, so the second thing is our old friend, the uh, fan blade on the super old 1926 motor. And I got a lot of advice from you guys. Um, yeah, so, and everybody said the exact same thing. Well, not everybody the exact same thing, but the overwhelming majority of the advice said that I needed to put penetrating oil all over in there and that this should slide out because that uh, retention pin had already been pulled and that it was probably rusted. And the penetrating oil is my best friend and just soak the heck out of it and come back the next day. And so, that's what I did. Everybody told me that that should just be knocked off. Uh, nobody said that there's another pin or anything like that available. So what I'm wondering is, could this be an exception because this motor is so old? Like, it's, it might be a different animal than a lot of the motors out there. I don't know. I have no idea. So, but let me tell you what's going on with it. So I, I got the uh, PB Blaster penetrating oil and soaked the heck out of it. So the penetrating oil works wonders. Uh, as a matter of fact, it completely freely spins now. However, this fan blade did not just come off. So I tried uh, setting it across some haul, saw horses with the heavy motor underneath and then using a punch did not come off. Listen to this. So when I pull it, you hear that? That is something mechanical blocking and it's not rust. So because it's completely free, it can, so it's, theoretically it should just pull out. So there's only two things that I can think of. Let me uh, show them to you and then you can tell me which I should pursue first. Okay, so here's the, uh, the place where the shaft enters into the motor. And there's an exact replica on the other side, almost like it's two-sided. So if this shaft was supposed to stay with this, and this fan was just supposed to slide off, doesn't that mean that there should be a shaft here? So, but that's, uh, that's actually solid. So I don't know. Uh, the other thing I'm wondering is if there's something here that has to be done. Maybe that this is like a, like a nut or something that has to be screwed off. There's like one flat edge. Do you see that? Maybe I have to like stick a screwdriver in there and try to rotate that. I don't know. But I think that this is the actually the thing that's clanking when I pull it. And the other thing that I wanted to mention is that that shaft is not solidly connected to that collar there. So I don't know if I can do this, film it and do it at the same time. So let me see if I can see how. Sorry, I can't get a better view of it. So it's almost as if the shaft is connected to the fan blade and it was inserted into this. So either this front hole has to be, that nut has to be removed or there's these giant 
bolts here. I guess they're bolts. I don't know what they are. There's a head on each side. And I'm wondering if that's a pin, a retention pin that passes through the shaft. And if I back that out, but it, you know, typically, or typically, like I, I say that like I know what I'm talking about. Like if there's anything typical about this. But uh, I would think that if there was a retention pin through the shaft, there wouldn't be a lot of play. So that's all the information I have. And maybe somebody out there can tell me <laughs> what it is I need to do to get that off. And once I get the first one off, then I'll be able to do the other nine, no problem, hopefully. So, yeah, okay. And then one other thing I wanted to ask you all about. And that's this guy. This is like a, some kind of a jack or a lift. I think it probably went under like a, a trailer bumper, a trailer, I don't know, to lift a vehicle or a trailer or something. So this uh, thing here cranks. And as it turns, this hook raises and lowers on this threaded uh, bar there. So I'm guessing that that went under like a bumper maybe. Or a trailer, maybe a trailer hitch to lift up the front end of a trailer. Not sure. Uh, question. So this is like so many other things in here that I have dreams for of making a lamp out of. Because uh, my thinking was that I could make a, uh, a nice gooseneck S-shaped stem here with a, a Benjamin-style gas station lamp on top. And then it could be adjusted uh, up and down. And that, that gooseneck would allow for this thing to function as it's supposed to. Maybe I would even uh, put it on casters. Because there's a bunch of old casters all over the factory. And uh, that could be pretty neat. So my question is, and the, uh, the main thing that I basically want to weld for, you know, I'm not putting car frames together or anything like that. I want to put something somewhere and let it stick. Maybe not let it splatter too much because uh, I don't want to, it, it's, it's for furniture stuff. So what kind of welder should I be interested in? I know that uh, a lot of comments are gonna say, well, YouTube's your best friend and just do a Google. But uh, I, I really have benefited from the hive mind here at YouTube and uh, I've got a lot of advice. And so I was hoping that you guys could advise me on what kind of uh, welder that I should be starting with. So it's mostly for furniture stuff. Uh, it's just to stick something somewhere and make it stay. Um, you know, I don't need long welds or anything like that. Mostly spot welds will do it or, you know, around the circumference of a, a pipe that would be a leg or something like that. So uh, I know there are four or five, six different styles of uh, welders that I can get. And one other thing that I wanted to keep in mind is like the learning curve and what's something that I can be up and running and uh, weld stuff right away and, you know, not need to do an internship or an apprenticeship in order to learn how to do. So uh, if anybody has any advice on that, uh, please uh, comment for me. And it's okay if like, uh, if somebody says, for example, a MIG welder, and then nine other people say MIG welder, that's okay, I'll see a consensus uh, in the comments. And uh, yeah, I really value the uh, the advice that I'm getting from this channel, and I, I just have you guys to thank for that. So uh, that's it for today. Thank you so much once again for visiting the channel, and uh, I'll be back with you guys soon.